folks, Tim from Alpha Wolf Trading coming at you from my second fake yacht. And let me tell you, this fake yacht, way better. Look around than my first fake yacht. All right, this is exciting. We're going to talk about earnings. This is the last video in the earnings series. And we're going to talk about Q&A and management discussion and analysis. This is the most important thing to me uh, when it comes to evaluating a company. Now, understand, earnings get reported. There are analyst expectations. There was the guide from the previous quarter. There's all these different things to take into consideration. But earnings from last quarter are in the past. They cannot be changed, right? It's a snapshot of what just happened. What's important is what is going to happen the next quarter or the quarter after that. So a lot of times you'll see a good earnings report and then all of a sudden, uh, you know, stock pops and you get a reversal. Why is that? A lot of times it has to do with something that was discovered in management's discussion and analysis, which can be found in the uh, 10Q or the 10K. This is where they talk about, uh, you know, events and trends and uncertainties and capital needs and stuff like that, right? So maybe there was something discovered there that spooked some people. The other thing uh, that I think that could happen is you have the conference call and in the conference call, something is either asked in Q&A that is answered and maybe the street doesn't like what they hear, right? There's a lot of things that um, you have to take into consideration. Seasonality, right? Maybe this was a their best quarter, uh, typically their best quarter, and their worst quarter is coming up next quarter. Who knows, right? That is something that you're only going to know if you go back and you look at previous calls. So what I do like prepared remarks. I don't spend a lot of time there, and that's because they're prepared remarks. They're designed to make the company look as good as humanly possible, even if earnings are terrible, right? So if a company has no earnings, you will see, you're not going to see numbers in the headline. You're going to see things like, you know, paid down our debt or, you know, secured financing, uh, you know, signed a few customers, whatever. But it's not going to have anything, any focus on numbers because they don't want to highlight the fact that they just lost a boatload of money. So they're going to try and highlight what they have accomplished in the quarter. And that's not necessarily a a bad thing if that's what they had um, indicated in the previous quarter, right? So what I like to use prepared remarks for is to go back and look at what management said from the pre prior quarter or two prior quarters or three prior quarters and see that they are executing, right? That they are staying on plan. The strategy is, is still in place. That is the only thing I use the prepared remarks for. The other thing I will do uh, when it comes to bottom line is Q&A is where I, I feel you get the best information, right? Because if you've got smart analysts on there asking good questions, that's not scripted stuff, right? Now, the other thing too, keep an eye on the analysts. Take a look at the previous quarters. See how many analysts were on the call and who they represent, right? You start to see some big names like Citibank or J.P. Morgan or you know Merrill Lynch, uh, Morgan Stanley, Goldman Sachs, right? You start seeing some well-known analysts showing up for the call. That could be an indication that something something's happening in this company that's that could be good, right? That could be, uh, and it's getting the attention of Wall Street. So if you start to see more analysts, that could be a very good indicator. Now, let's talk about the analysts. So there's, listen, there's, there's, when you're evaluating a company, a very easy way to evaluate is four quadrants. It's called SWOT, SWOT analysis, right? So what is SWOT? SWOT is strengths, weaknesses, opportunities, and threats, right? Now, analysts have a tendency to lean one way or the other sometimes you'll get you can tell by the questions that they ask right they're, they're you get the guys that are uh maybe glass half empty guys and they're like all of their questions are geared towards the the weaknesses and the threats right 
And then you get the guys that everything is sunshine and rainbows and they are focused primarily on the opportunities and the strengths, right? I like to hear both. Every once in a while, you'll get a guy that, you know, seems to be pretty balanced, but uh, more than not, you'll have guys that are, you can tell are on one side and the guys that are on the other side. So I love to hear the whole thing because why? You don't want to be a cheerleader for any company, right? You need to hear both sides. You, you need to hear those, those questions that maybe you didn't think about, maybe that are a little bit on the negative side, but it gives you a very balanced picture of what the company is facing, right? So having analysts, the more analysts on the call, the better, right? Um, sometimes there are no analysts at all. Sometimes it'll be questions from retail investors. And some of those questions are really terrible, right? They don't tell you anything. Uh, but, uh, what the whole point is, is that when you're asking, when management's getting asked questions, you, when you have somebody that is confident in their strategy and, um, you know, you, you can tell, feels good about where the company is headed. I mean, keep in mind, every quarter, there could be events that are beyond anybody's control. COVID would be a good example of that. But how those events are handled may push them back, maybe pushes the company back in their plans a couple of months or whatever, but they're still on track, right? And that's what's important to me. So you have to, you have to take into account those events, but you can tell when you have a very confident executive team, right? And they are, uh, they almost get that cat that ate the canary type thing, right? So listen for the tone. And, you know, being that the questions aren't scripted, you get some really good nuggets out of there. So Q&A is extremely important. Now, what's this all for, right? What, what, are we, what are we trying to determine? We're trying to determine, is the strategy solid? Is it strong? Is it sound? Are they executing that strategy, right? So if you have great strategy, great execution, right? Maybe it's a turnaround story. New management team has come in taken over and they're putting the company back on track. They're doing the things that need to be done that the former management team failed to recognize, right? Leadership is the most important thing when it, for me when it comes to evaluating a company, right? And that's why it's so important. That's why I interview every, if I can't interview the executive team of a company I'm going to, I want to invest in, I won't invest in them. So, you have to pay attention to leadership because you can have a great product, great service, but if you don't have great leadership, odds of success are slim, in my opinion, okay? Um, and then the track record, right? If you've got a leadership team that has, uh, you know, turned around several companies in the past, odds are they're probably gonna do it again. You just gotta be patient, right? And you have to understand the vision and you have to make sure they're executed. That is the most important thing for me when it comes to earning season and evaluating company. Okay? All right, so listen, uh, thanks for watching this. But uh, next series, man, let me tell you, we're going to have some fun. I think a lot of people are intimidated by earnings calls and conference calls and partially because they don't know what the hell management's talking about. Because of why? Because of all the damn acronyms. We're going to go into... Wall Street acronyms in the next series. We're going to have so much fun. All right. If you like this video, do me a favor. Give me a like. Give me a follow. You know, give me a share. Would really appreciate it. Uh, listen, uh, enjoy the rest of your weekend and Happy New Year, everybody. Okay. We'll see you soon on the next series.